to reddish dog I agree. Let's do red. Red is a vibe. But I feel it kind of clashes with the purple and pink. It's up. We're gonna set our own train. <laughs> All right, y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is a long overdue video. A lot of people have asked me to share my bootcamp experience. And I've kind of delayed that. I'm not sure why. I kind of feel like a lot of people do bootcamp stories. So why is mine so important to share? But if I'm sharing everything else about my, my coding life or my tech life, I think it's only fair to share this part too. I feel like it'll be a great benefit to whoever is watching. So this is a series. This is part one of my bootcamp series. This episode, I'll be focusing on my life before bootcamp. Why I wrote in bootcamp, why I chose coding bootcamp. So yeah, let's get it. But before then, let's get some matcha. I got some matcha from Starbucks. I didn't finish it. Matcha me, please. This right here is fire. Before I even realized that I wanted to go to coding bootcamp, I was going down the path of becoming a cybersecurity analyst specifically a SOC analyst. I was actually going to a small bootcamp, a one month bootcamp to learn the basics of cybersecurity. I was working as a quality assurance. And if you know anything about quality assurance, QA, you are working hand in hand with developers. So what you're doing is testing the software that they're writing to ensure that everything is working correctly. For me, that was just a job that was a pretty good job. It was a cool job, it was paying pretty good, but I really had no interest in the coding and testing field. It wasn't until, and I promise you this is not a made up story, this is for real. I was walking to the bathroom and I saw one of my coworkers VS Code. At that time, obviously I didn't know it was VS Code. So all I saw was just numbers and letters and just different colors. And I asked him, I was like, hey, what do you do? Like, what is all this stuff here? He told me that he's a developer, uh, specifically an Unreal developer for the company. And what he does is just develop games and the stuff that I'm testing out, like he's literally the one building these things. I thought it was pretty cool. He told me about the work about the work life balance, obviously the pay, the joy he gets from just making things out of nothing. Literally the whole week I will come into the office and ask some questions about developers and what he does specifically. And it really piqued my interest. And so quickly I found myself finding more interest in coding than cybersecurity. So I just dropped it. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm already in this QA field. I'm already working hand in hand with developers. So why not find a way to pivot from QA to do what they're doing? And so fast forward months ahead, I find myself falling in love with code. I find myself YouTubing and I find myself listening to podcasts. And you know, I, I came across people like Krishan on YouTube, people like Tech Rally. And so after doing all the research I could, I realized, and I just remembered that one of my brothers from another mother, he codes. He does some things in the financial system realm. And I hit him up just to pick his mind on things that I've learned and kind of see what he knows about this space. I can never forget this day because it was one of the pivotal moments in my career. He sat me down and the one thing that he said, he said a lot of things, but one thing that stuck to me was this. He told me that in this tech field, there's so many things that you can do. And a lot of them will put you in a good career path. But as I'm starting out, just pick one thing and stick to it. If you don't, you'll find yourself bouncing around, bouncing around for years, and you would never get anything done. So that really stuck with me because I felt like that was my situation. I was learning Python one day. The next day I was learning HTML and CSS. The next day I was learning React. I had no track record or path to follow. So that night I came home and I researched, what is the path to become a web developer? I just want that, forget everything else. What is the path to become a web developer? And a video of a guy uh, called Krishan, I'm sure you guys, many of you guys will know Krishan, where he just shared his story. He documented his journey from A to Z. And y'all, I binge watched his YouTube channel, just getting inspiration and motivation, just seeing the way he was able to come from nothing. And now he's a software engineer. It really inspired me and motivated me. And above all, it gave me a clear path. So from there, I started learning HTML and CSS on YouTube. I then realized that there's a place called Udemy where you can learn how to code. And really Udemy is not a platform just for coding, but you can learn so many different skills from there. But for me specifically, I could use Udemy, it's a cheaper route, for me to go ahead and learn how to code. So I enrolled in a course with the professor is Colt Steele. Um, if you're looking for a professor to teach you online, I will recommend him 100%, 1000%. He's amazing. I still use him to date to go through certain materials. And so I found his platform, I found his course, which taught me HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a little bit of backend and the command line. So I, y'all, I went in on that course. 
Now, the only thing was this. I would study for about a month and then give up because I had no accountability. It was so hard. HTML CSS was cool, but once I got to JavaScript, y'all, I was like, oh God, what am I learning here? And so because I didn't have any kind of accountability, I dropped off, right? Now at that time, y'all, we were broke, broke, broke. Our financial situation was not good at all. And so I knew that I had to take, learn how to code seriously. I couldn't afford to code for a month and then stop. This wasn't a hobby. I needed a quick career change. And so even though I had Udemy, I still needed community, which led me to research about universities or schools that are teaching coding programs. Doing my research, I stumbled across a bootcamp, which it was a six month bootcamp and you wouldn't have to pay anything. You don't have to pay a dime until you graduate and found a job. And so when I saw that, I thought that was amazing. Now I did some research on that school and a lot of people had a lot of bad things to say about it. But for me, the fact that it was free until I found a job, in my eyes, it was a win. Now, a lot of y'all are probably wondering what coding bootcamp this was, because um, this is the same coding bootcamp I went to and I graduated from. At that time, they were called Lambda School, but now they're called Blue Tech. When I got that congratulation email that, hey, you're welcome to our program, I was like, yes, thank you, Jesus. This is it. This is what I'm doing. It's free until I get a job. Bet. Let's go for it. So that was a quick overview of my life before I made the decision to go to bootcamp and why I made the decision to go to bootcamp. Stay tuned for the next episode of my coding bootcamp journey.